how to flush a water heater. That's an easy thing to do. Today we're gonna show you how and we're gonna do something different. We're gonna do two different water heaters. The first water heater we're gonna do has not been flushed in two years and it's just on the normal potable water system. Later, we're gonna do another one. Now we may not do it in the same video, it depends on how everything goes today, but I wanna show you the difference in a house without a filtration system and an anti-scale system and one with. Now this water heater is a house that we installed the water heater two years ago. We're gonna do a flush and what I've done, I've taken a bucket, cut some holes in it, and we're gonna run water right through a white cloth. That way we can see what kind of sediment we pull out of the water heater just after two years. Then, later, we're gonna do a comparison. We're gonna go to a water heater that we haven't flushed in two years, but it has a water filtration system and an anti-scale device. Now, it's hot out here, it's almost 100 degrees. I know I look good right now, but this may not last long, so anyway, Let's get started. Now, we got what we need here, so we're gonna get in here, get everything hooked up, and get ready to go. All right, let's get booties on, get ready to go in, and get everything hooked up. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get ready to hook the hose up. So, I'm gonna pull out a pair of channel locks just so I can snug it up, and a screwdriver to turn the valve. But first, I wanna show you what I love about the Bradford White Water Heaters is they have a metal valve here. And I like that because you don't have any problems. Now, this is a plastic replacement that they sell at the box stores. And the problems that you run into is the way these things are designed. Now, on these other valves, you still gotta have a screwdriver to open it and close it. But when you get it down in there and look, you just don't get quite as big of an opening as I really prefer. And these metal valves tend to open up really well and give you a good flow. When I flush a water heater, I like to hook it up leave the water pressure on and flush it out. I don't drain out the water here. The reason being is I want as much pressure as I can. The way these Bradford White Defender Series are designed, the inlet tube lets water push out around and actually rinse the bottom of the water heater out. So when I'm trying to flush it to get the sediment out, I want full pressure because I want it to blow and rinse it. So when I've got this valve open full blast, it's actually giving that sediment room and a place to go. All right, here we go. So what I've done here, I've actually drilled four holes in the bottom of this bucket. Now the reason I did that is I want the water to be able to come in through the top, go through my filter, come out the bottom and never fill the bucket up so it's not filling it up or anything like that. What I wanna do is just see how much sediment do we actually get out? How much calcium, how much magnesium are we getting out of one of these water heaters? Like I said, this one is two years old. So, watch, up, oh, up, oh, here it comes. I don't really like to let these run 10, 15 minutes. A lot of times what I'm doing, if I've got a filter like this where I can actually look and see what's coming out, whenever I spray in the same spot, I'm actually seeing particles hit it and then some actually get pushed through it. Because like I said, this is just like a rag, like a loose rag, like a t-shirt. And as the wetter it gets, the more it's stretching out and the bigger the holes are becoming. But this is still quite a bit of sediment because this is just the big pieces. All the little pieces like sand, they're going through this and I understand it. But I like to give it about 10 or 15 minutes or until I can't see anything at all coming out of the water. Not a bad way to do it. Now, if you look on these metal valves, these brass valves, you can actually see that the screwdriver slot goes across the valve when it's closed and in line with the valve when it's open. That's how you know if it's open and you should be getting full water flow. If you've ever flushed a water here before, let me know what kind of sediment did you get? I've seen people pull out handfuls of it and I've seen just a little bit like this. This really isn't too bad. These are mainly the big pieces. Like I said, this is more like a t-shirt and I can actually look and see through it right now. It's like a screen. It's gonna let through all the sand sized particles, things like that, but the bigger stuff, as you see, it held on to. Now imagine over the years, the inside of your water heater will fill up with this sediment. It will coat the inside of the tank. It will coat everything on the inside. If you've got an electric water heater, it'll coat the elements. It's very beneficial to flush a water heater. If you've got a tankless, we've got another video where we actually show you how to flush a tankless water heater. Go check that video out. We've actually done a full video on how to flush a tankless water heater. So even if you're thinking about getting one, you may wanna watch that video just to see what the differences are. Anyway, let me know how this has worked out for you. Has it helped your water heater last longer? I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.